Nuremberg Trials and Principles by Sanderson Beck. After the First World War, the Allied powers had accused 896 persons of war crimes, but only 12 were tried before the German Supreme Court at Leipzig in 1921. Six were convicted, and the longest sentence was four years in prison. On August 8, 1945, the governments of the United States, France, Britain, and the Soviet Union announced their agreement to prosecute and punish the major war criminals of the European Axis. In the Charter of the International Military Tribunal, they defined crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. And they noted that the defendants' official positions or the fact that they were following orders of their governments did not free them of responsibility. President Harry S. Truman designated U.S. Supreme Court Justice Robert H. Jackson, who became the chief prosecutor for the United States. He suggested Nuremberg as the best site for the military tribunal, which began there on October 18th. Jackson observed that no trial in history ever had such a comprehensive scope. German organizations such as the Nazi Party, the SS, the SA, the SD, the General Staff and OKW, and the Gestapo were also tried. Some argued that the crimes charged in the Nuremberg Principles were ex post facto and therefore invalid but they were also accused of violating the Hague Conventions, Versailles Treaty, Locarno Treaty, kellogg briand Pact, and other recognized principles of international law. Defense attorneys argued that if these men were guilty, then many of the Allies were also. The first trial lasted nearly a year. The final judgment found a common plan or conspiracy and aggressive war, based on meetings that took place as early as November 5, 1937. Aggression against Poland, aggressive war against the Soviet Union, war against the United States, murder and ill-treatment of prisoners of war and civilian population, slave labor policy, persecution of the Jews and other crimes. Of the 22 men first indicted, Schlacht, von Papen, and Fritsch, were acquitted. Gehring, von Ribbentrop, Keitel, Kaltenbrunner, Rosenberg, Frank, Frick, Stryker, Sauckel, Jodl, and Seyss Inquart were hanged. Bormann was probably killed trying to escape. Hess, Funk, and Rader were put in prison for life, and Dönitz was sentenced to 10 years, von Neurath to 15 years, and von Schirach and Speer to 20 years. The International Military Tribunal for the Far East began in Tokyo on June 4, 1946, but the judgment was not given until November 4, 1948. Of the 28 Japanese indicted Class A war criminals, two died during the trial. Seven were hanged. One was sent to a psychiatric ward and was released in 1948. One was sentenced to 20 years, and the rest were sentenced to life imprisonment, though 14 had been paroled by 1956. By November 1948, military courts had charged 7,109 defendants with war crimes that had resulted in 3,686 convictions and 924 acquittals. 1,019 were given death sentences and 33 committed suicide. And 2,667 were sentenced to prison. By 1958, the Western Allies had convicted 5,025 Germans, sentenced 806 to death, and executed 486. The Soviet Union had convicted about 10,000. More trials were held for many years. On December 11, 1946, the United Nations General Assembly unanimously passed Resolution 95 affirming the principles of international law recognized by the Charter and Judgment of the Nuremberg Tribunal. 
These principles of international law were formulated and published by the International Law Commission on July 29, 1950. Principle 1. Any person who commits an act which constitutes a crime under international law is responsible, therefore, and liable to punishment. Principle 2. The fact that internal law does not impose a penalty for an act which constitutes a crime under international law does not relieve the person who committed the act from responsibility under international law. Principle 3. The fact that a person committed an act which constitutes a crime under international law, acted as head of state or a responsible government official, does not relieve him from responsibility under international law. Principle 4. The fact that a person acted pursuant to order of his government or of a superior does not relieve him from responsibility under international law, provided a moral choice was in fact possible to him. Principle 5. Any person charged with a crime under international law has the right to a fair trial on the facts and law. Principle 6. The crimes hereinafter set out are punishable as crimes under international law. A. Crimes against peace. 1. Planning, preparation, initiation, or waging of a war of aggression or a war in violation of international treaties, agreements, or assurances. 2. Participation in a common plan or conspiracy for the accomplishment of any of the acts mentioned under 1. B. War crimes. Violations of the laws or customs of war which include, but are not limited to, murder, ill-treatment, or deportation to slave labor, or for any other purpose of civilian population, of or in occupied territory, murder or ill-treatment of prisoners of war or persons on the seas, killing of hostages, plunder of public or private property, wanton destruction of cities, towns, or villages, or devastation not justified by military necessity. C. Crimes against humanity. Murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, and other inhuman acts done against any civilian population, or persecutions on political, racial, or religious grounds when such acts are done or such persecutions are carried on in execution of or in connection with any crime against peace or any war crime. Principle 7. Complicity in the commission of a crime against peace, a war crime, or a crime against humanity, as set forth in Principle 6, is a crime under international law. Geneva Conventions On December 9, 1948, the United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 260, adopting the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide and invited the International Law Commission to study the issue of international criminal jurisdiction. Genocide was defined as an act intended to destroy all or part of a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group and may include killing or harming members of the group or attempting to prevent or remove children of the group. The convention was ratified by enough nations to become effective in 1951. Four Geneva Conventions, also called the Red Cross Conventions, were signed by representatives of 58 nations on August 12, 1949, to update and protect the rights of the wounded and sick, prisoners of war, and civilians in time of war. The Fourth Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war was ratified by the United States and went into force February 2, 1956. It includes the following. Article 27. Protected persons are entitled in all circumstances 
to respect for their persons, their honor, their family rights, their religious convictions and practices, and their manners and customs. They shall at all times be humanely treated and shall be protected specifically against all acts of violence or threats thereof and against insults and public curiosity. Women shall be especially protected against any attack on their honor, in particular against rape, enforced prostitution, or any form of indecent assault. Without prejudice to the provisions relating to their state of health, age, and sex, all protected persons shall be treated with the same consideration by the party to the conflict in whose power they are, without any adverse distinction based, in particular, on race, religion, or political opinion. Article 30. The high contracting parties specifically agree that each of them is prohibited from taking any measure of such character as to cause physical suffering or extermination of protected persons in their lands. This prohibition applies not only to murder, torture, corporal punishment, mutilation, and medical or scientific experiments not necessitated by the medical treatment of a protected person, but also to any other measures of brutality, whether applied by civilian or military agents. Article 31. No protected person may be punished for an offense he or she has not personally committed. Collective penalties and likewise all measures of intimidation or of terrorism are prohibited. Pillage is prohibited. Reprisals against protected persons and their property are prohibited. Article 32. The taking of hostages is prohibited.